Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, When Truth Matters Far More Than Feelings. When Truth Matters Far More Than Feelings. When I grew up, I watched individuals who were quite sassy, spicy, bold, if you will. They spoke their mind. They didn't care too much what people thought or how they felt just so long as they spoke their truth. They walked away content. But the day that someone didn't want them to speak their truth, the day that someone wanted them to make them feel good is the day that there was going to be an argument and there just might even be a physical fight. Strong, bold, courageous women who were not going to tolerate foolishness. But what was interesting was that they tolerated foolishness for a long time before they got to be these bold, courageous, strong women. You see, that's the part that when you're listening to people who are speaking truth, speaking their mind, they don't tell you. But today, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you that many of those women were weak before they became strong. Many of those women cowered to men before they stood up to men. Many of those women ran from men before they finally said, I'm going to stop running. Many a woman had tears in her eyes before she stopped crying. And we got some individuals who, whether you're male, female, adult, or child, you have gotten to that place where all you want to do is speak the truth because truth matters. All you ever wanted to do was just state how you truly felt without worrying over what others felt about you speaking truth. I remember being so worried, so fearful that any truth that I spoke, that there might be some consequences. So I'm going to put on that act. I'm going to say whatever they want me to say, just so that I can get that pressure off of me, that tension, that worry, that stress, And most of all, I don't want to be physically punished. But then once I got out, out of the box or many boxes that sometimes we either walk into or people put us in, I said, I'm going to stop being concerned about what they think, what they feel, how I'm going to articulate a message or write a book. Come on. Where it's comfy and cozy and that it doesn't rock the boat. You're not being honest when you're like that. It was God who gave me the strength to go ahead and say enough is enough. I'm going to speak the truth. I'm not going to sit up here and tell lies, cover ups and all this other foolishness. I'm not doing it. And we all know about consequences. Well, you know, if you start saying this and that, then you're going to miss out on this. You're going to lose that. Well, you know what? I got a God. Hallelujah. I got this God who he speaks his mind. I got this bold, courageous God that, 
Oh, if you mess with his children, strange things happen. You might have thought you won one. <laughs> but uh, God comes along in the spiritual realm. And the next thing you know, you just can't seem to get a break. There's always some kind of ache, some kind of issue. There's always some trouble going on because someone wanted to shut up a truth speaker. Someone wanted you not to talk about what happened back in the day when you were about what? Three, eight, 10, 15. Somebody said, oh, you don't go talking about what went on with this one and that one because you know you're not too old to get hurt i mean we got folks i said in another audio that's 40 and 50 and 60 plus years old still scared still scared of parents still scared of their brother or sister who acted like a mother or father still concerned about what 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 would happen if you told the truth your truth what you saw what you truly experienced not what they told you you experienced in different situations your truth what you heard back in the day not what they told you you heard If we're going to walk this walk, we got to be about our father's business, not about what other people think, what other people say. And if it means that we're going to, you know, end up losing our lives as a result. Well, one thing about it, we just got spared all the other dramas and traumas that's ahead. Because there are going to be more dramas and traumas as we get to the last and final days where God says, I'm done. And if you need some further understanding when I say something like that, go over there to the book of Revelation. We've been talking truth for a long time on this channel. The time that I've recorded this message, it's been 12 years, 12 years of talking truth. Whether people agree, disagreed, it didn't matter. It was truth. And sometimes you just can't convince folks of the truth because they are programmed so heavily in believing the lies. They have even brainwashed their own selves into believing that what happened didn't really happen. Still denying the fact that they were hit, slapped, kicked, spit on, choked. Still denying the fact that somebody went upside their head or slapped them across the face. Still denying the fact that they were raped long ago. Still denying the fact that love wasn't really love. It was what was convenient at the time. And that was a house, a car, and some money. But yet the pictures go up on various social networking sites as if people are in love. Some folks, yes, I believe wholeheartedly. I got my favorite couple that I like. But there are those that, that's even a lie. That's even a lie. Once they log off, there is no truth that had been presented in those photos, in the, you know, profile updates or what have you. Instead, that was the lie. And the real truth is what goes on once the individual logs off. Once the individual stops uploading. We all have our truths. And when we're willing to face the truth, guess what? We meet God halfway. You see, he's just imagine God is walking towards you and then he suddenly stops 
And you're looking like, oh, God's going to keep on walking toward me, right? But he doesn't. He stops. And you're looking from a distance saying, why is it? Why is it that God has stopped walking? And then something within your spirit says, you keep walking. You keep walking, but you better have truth on your lips when you show up to meet God. Some of you all, it's been a long time since you've been honest with yourselves as well as other people. You just keep dropping lie to lie. Even when you haven't done research, talk to folk, you know, got some understanding, spent some real time with the one true God. You still want to tell some lies, still want to exaggerate, still want to cover up and say, well, I didn't lie, but you didn't speak the truth either. Holiday seasons, when they show up, oftentimes the dysfunctional family, they show out. I don't understand why some individuals continue to perpetuate lies at these gatherings. Folk got masks on their faces to protect themselves as well as whatever they might have to protect others. But I think those masks for some folks are a good reminder of just don't say anything if you're not going to speak the truth. The truth, the truth is what folks have fought over. They have organized protests. They have burned down buildings. I just want the truth. I don't want you all to keep telling me that what I heard and what I saw is not brutal. I don't want folk keep telling me, oh, you know, this one and that one deserved it and all this other stuff. Well, you see, if everybody deserve some just brutal punishment when they do something that's offensive or and wrong then why isn't everybody being hurt why is it that it's only a select few or a select look so i will go to my father with these sorts of things Trusting and believing that God is going to work some things out. I've had my share of prayers, but I also know that God's not planning on freeing some folks out of these matrix that they've created for themselves. You see... There are those matrix in this life where people are deceived. They are deceived because the matrix is built up based on lies. So the person who leads you, whether it is the president, the matriarch, the patriarch, the manager, the supervisor, or even the best friend. That individual has whatever story he or she is going to give you and you are going to believe that story because of your connection, <laughs> your matrix all tied up, all built up, designed in such a way to make you feel like you're independent when you're really dependent. 
controlling, manipulative individuals who have been doing a number on people for a long time sure know how to bring people into their matrix. You see, what you see isn't really what you see. What you hear isn't really what you hear. You know, that sort of thing. Doubting the real existence, the real experience, the real truth. I've met individuals who do that sort of thing. Salesmen are really good at doing this. The individual quoted me a price. Then once we get up to the register, he upped the price. I said, what are you doing? He chuckled. I said, you know, that's not the price that you told me. He was like, oh yeah, that's right. Yes, don't do that. I told him, don't do it. Because some people think you're a fool because in their matrix, your look, the way you talk, the way you walk, somebody told them those people are susceptible to being played, lied to, you know, they're not that smart. And then that individual meets one who, excuse me, what do you think you're doing? Lord Jesus, the truth, that's all someone wanted. I can see someone in the spiritual realm. I'm feeding off their anger right now. All this individual wanted was the truth. The man shows up with the lie and then showed up with another lie and another. And now the woman is beside herself with anger. She's contemplating on how she's going to get herself out of the matrix that was once called a marriage. Stay with me. In the spiritual realm, you got individuals, men dressed in three-piece suits with shoes on that you can't even pronounce. Hair trimmed, face looking, faces looking flawless. And they're sent on missions to talk to people in beautiful buildings. Buildings that you or I would never be able to enter. Gated buildings. And they sit down with individuals with lies on their lips. Persuading them to join their matrix. When an individual wakes up and they say, enough, this doesn't sound right. This doesn't look right. And I'm too old for this foolishness because I've seen a movie time and time again. That's when there is the war verbally or physically, or somebody is taking back something or somebody's no longer doing business. You are trying to play me for a fool says the one who awakens is tired of being used and abused. Going back to the women who spoke strongly, who were weak before they were strong, who were scared often before they became brave. Many of them are no longer walking above ground. 
many of them mature, wise, at one time in their lives, foolish, but got some sense about themselves. Before they checked out of here, they wanted us women to not be any fool, to not be so eager to want to please, to not be like them, caring so much about how someone feels. If I say this, if I do that. There's no strength when you're the one who's always acquiescing to everything that someone wants. Someone asks of you, can you, would you? Okay, I guess. Meanwhile, you got how many other things you're supposed to be doing and you got how many things you're supposed to be paying for, but you just continue to do these sorts of things because you just want to win someone. My grandmother told me a long time ago, and I've said this in other audio, that you cannot buy love. You got men who have been raised by women who they tend to have their behaviors that are very similar to weak women. And so there they are being used and abused. There they are saying, well, I just don't want to upset upset her. I just want to do, you know, the right thing by her because I don't want her to go nowhere or whatever else. And the Lord says, you don't have to. Hurt yourself emotionally, physically, spiritually because you are concerned about how someone feels if you say, I'm tired today. I don't want to do this. I can't stand this. We need to figure something else out. This isn't what I want. Somebody needs to start looking in the mirror and practicing those sentences that I just mentioned. God says, I want to raise up soldiers, but I can't raise up soldiers because there are too many individuals who are still under Pharaoh's rule. So rather than be soldiers, they're nothing more than slaves. They might not be out here picking cotton, (laughs) right? They may not be out here in the barn somewhere being hurt by someone to get them to do any number of things, but they are walking like slaves, acting like slaves, having a slave mentality. And when you speak the truth to individuals who have a slave mentality, who have a cult mindset, who are the type who are, who've been victimized for far too long. When you speak that kind of truth to them, that you are what you are right now, but God wants to deliver you, wants to change you. They want us truth tellers, truth speakers, Us children of light, go ahead on somewhere. Be concerned about whatever you got going on. Don't judge me. Who's judging? We bring the truth and the devil got some people so deceived that they say things, foolish things like, don't judge me. But you're being hurt. And that's what you think. I've been with this person for 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years. You just go ahead on somewhere, little girl. Now you want to insult me. (laughs) Well, we dust our sandals off. And the devil, he has his way with some folks. They don't run to us and ask us to pray for them because they know better. They won't go somewhere else. And then there are those that, oh, okay, well, I guess you was right. I'm going to have to humble myself. 
But see, all I wanted you to do was not only do what is right, but I wanted you to see the truth for what it is. That person don't love you. That person don't care for you. That person has been using you. That person has been abusing you. That person has been doing the types of things or saying the types of things that's keeping you in bondage. And time and time again, in many of these audios, I always come back to some kind of conversation about drawing near to the Lord. Why do I do that? Because there's freedom in drawing near to the Lord. You're no longer fearful because I'm under the blood covering of Jesus Christ. I know that Jesus is my personal savior. I know that in order to have a relationship with the one true God, I got to go through Jesus first. Because he's the son of God. He's the one who died on the cross. He didn't ask me to physically die on the cross. He had already done that. But instead, he wants me to put the flesh to death. In a symbolic way. To no longer be consumed by natural things demonic things, sinful things, things that keep us away from the Lord. And lies and worrying about how people feel, keep folks time and time and time again away from the one true God. But you don't know my mama. I don't need to know your mother. I know that if I spend about a good five to 10 minutes, I know who's running the show. If I spend enough time with some individuals, I know that their husband is running the show. I have done this offline. I have done this because of the different types of jobs I've had. I have literally, because they don't know me like some of you all know me. (laughs) They just think they're talking to, you know, an employee, a worker, whatever. And I sit up there and I study these people and I say to myself, oh my goodness. This person is going to end up spending all this money just to make someone happy. But meanwhile, they don't really want this. Or this individual. He doesn't have no plan on marrying her, but she willing to buy up some furniture and do all these things to appease this man. I could see it all over his face that he nah, he's not going to stick it out with this woman. I'm going to give it a good 12 months to 24 months before they have a huge falling out. And then she's saying to herself, wow, wow. The writing is on the wall with liars. It's just that when we don't want to believe that a person is a liar, we dismiss and we dismiss, don't we? I don't want to believe that my mama ever told me a lie. So I'm going to dismiss what this person told me. Uh, I don't want to believe that, you know, uh, my friend tells me these types of lies. I don't want to believe that my son or daughter tells me lies. I just don't want to believe. And God says, but you better believe because you're in for a world of hurt. If you don't start seeing the truth for what it is. Somebody got a personality disorder. Somebody got some kind of undiagnosed mental illness of some sort that causes them to tell a lie. Somebody else, they don't have none of that. They just like lying because it's entertaining for them. Others, they feel powerful when they tell a lie. She don't deserve the truth. I'm just going to tell the lie. God says, I want you to wake up. I want you to wake up to the truth. I want you to stop being concerned once again about what everybody think and how you're making them feel when you speak your mind, the truth, not speaking your mind to insult people and being a sassy frassy or a spicy dicey, but just an individual who says, I'm sorry. But I'm going to have to disagree with you. This is how I feel about this. Because so many times people who don't like to stand up and speak a truth, you know what they do? They end up going home. Let's say the workplace, for instance, they end up going home and taking out their attitude and their mean spirit on people in the household. 
You'll smile at those individuals at work and you'll swallow their lies, but then you'll come home and you're frowning at everybody and you want them to speak truth. What's wrong with just standing up for yourself and for what you know to be, what you know to be true at work? Well, I want to get paid and I'm afraid they might. Well, you know what? Then that's not a job for you. It's not worth staying at a job if you got to keep shutting up. Because you're afraid that somebody might take something from you or they might write you up or you might be giving them an excuse to get rid of you. You know what? If you're that worried and that concerned, it's time for somebody to start looking for another job. Because if it gets to a point where I'm concerned about every little itty bitty thing that comes out my mouth, like I can't, you know, speak up about maybe systems, right? Process. I'm not allowed to talk about operations. I'm not allowed to give some suggestions. Uh, If I, if, if that is how it is, then somebody better look for another job. But some folks say, but I want this job. Well, if you want this job, then fight for it. Some individuals, they're sitting back and they wait for people, wait for people to come in and say, I don't like this and I got a better way of doing it. Well, it's about time. There are those individuals who are very secure in who they are. They just want some folks that's going to come in and be honest with them. Come on in my office. Talk to me for a while. Tell me, how do you truly feel about the way things are? Sometimes you can't wait for people to call you into the office and ask you, how do you feel about this and that? We have some individuals in our own families still waiting for that opportune time. It's been five years, 10 years, 15, 20, 30 plus years since incidents took place. And you still waiting for somebody to come in a room, sit down with you and let's have that conversation. Some folks, they got this mentality when hell freezes over, I'm going to have that conversation. You see, felt comfortable talking the truth with talking about the truth with your siblings, felt comfortable talking about the truth with your favorite auntie, but you won't stand up to the one that abused you. They even talked on your behalf, whether you know it or not. And that abuser is like, she's never going to come over here and talk to me about a doggone thing because she know better. There were opportunities in my life where one, I had questions. I wasn't trying to be confrontational, but I had questions and those questions didn't get answered. There were times where I made statements, just a simple statement. And it was met with attitude. There were times where God put me in a setting and I just watch folk and somebody brought up a topic and the individual didn't want to admit the truth, wanted to avoid the conversation. You see, I've been placed in settings at different times in my life where there was a time to talk and there was a time not to talk. There was a time to observe and there was a time to just go on about my business. And there was a time where there's that one who I'll fight that battle for you. Tell me what's on your mind. And there were times where I raised my voice and I had tears in my eyes. And then I was seen as being disrespectful. Pent up anger, years and years, emotional, could barely put my words together at times. And now I'm being told I'm being disrespectful. Some of you all, it is time. I say all that in this message to say this. It is time. God is tapping on you your mind, your body, your spirit. And he's saying that it's not just about reading your word, this walk. It's not just about, uh, you know, listening to the gospel music or the contemporary Christian and, you know, getting your praise on, but 
This walk is also about being real with yourself, being real with others without fear. Lord, take the fear from me. I am not going to suffocate my voice when I see wrong is wrong. Some of you all don't like people that are bold because you're not bold, because you're not brave, because you don't like to feel that tension. But sometimes it takes tension and anger in the room to get people to do something. So I'm sorry you feel uncomfortable, but we're going in and we're going to fight the good fight. And we're going to trust and believe that God got our back because we prayed <laughs> before we started a war. So if we got a president right now. At the time I'm recording this message, who he, he's totally fine with speaking his mind. What's wrong with some of those that support his party? It's about time they start speaking their mind too. And whatever he got over some folks heads. Well, I could tell you that we done seen a whole lot and there's not too much that's going to surprise us because we already know that there's some folks that have done their share of dirt we just might forgive and forget if some folks would just simply tell the truth speak their truth and stop allowing folks who's dysfunctional to lead them and to tell them just about anything so that is it I hope that someone feels encouraged. I know your mind is kind of thinking in a different way right now, but that's what you're supposed to do. A different way, a way that's going to free you out of the foolishness, right? A way that's going to strengthen you and empower you to tell the truth. And yes, I know, I know from personal experience, I did speak some truth and did I get pushed around? Yes, I did. Did I end up getting into the physical altercations? Yes, I did. But you know what? It was all worth it because I came away knowing that huh, at least they know that I'm no fool. Hallelujah. Thank you, as always, for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube in I'm Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel. And thank you and thank you some more for those who have been moved by the spirit of the Lord to give. May the Lord continue to be with you. Blessings to you.